They do look so good. In her Flagstaff laboratory, Arizona Game and Fish research biologist Pilar Walters is checking on her babies. After they hatch, they just kind of wiggle around in the bottom of the container until they're ready to swim up. These newly hatched fish are native to the Colorado River, but they got their start in a lab run by the USGS. Oh yes, look at the eggs! Oh you guys, this is amazing. This is where Pilar combined eggs and sperm from adult fish to spawn razorback suckers, flannel mouth suckers, and combinations of both. By making hybrids, she's hoping to learn a thing or two about how they might affect the future of the endangered razorback sucker. So this is a razorback sucker. You can see this nuchal keel right behind its head. So the purpose of this study is to understand how hybridization with flannel mouth sucker could impact the recovery of wild razorback suckers. Pilar gets her adult razorbacks from the Nevada Department of Wildlife and its lake meat hatchery. The flannel mouths are from the confluence of the Perea and Colorado rivers. This is Lee's Ferry. It's the start of rafting trips through the Grand Canyon and fishing trips on the Colorado River. Just downstream is where the murky, sediment-laden Perea River spills into the crystal clear waters of the mighty Colorado. I wanted to show you what this place looks like in the daylight because Pilar does her work here in the dark. Hopefully we get them. This is where we got them last year. We've been out a couple other times where we didn't catch any. A lot of other scientists have come in here to study the flannel mouth suckers spawning in the Perea. So I'm not the first. Um, in fact, they told me how to come in here and catch them, but then I, I refined it to the nighttime and it seems to be a lot more effective. So sailing into gale force winds. With help from her intern, Marshall, Pilar drags a seine through the water and hopes for the best. We've got fish, you guys. Yes. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This is a flannel mouth sucker. Yeah. Oh man, that's amazing. See, see what I mean? Just one pull, they're there. <laughs> now, what we have to do is process them. Karina is a volunteer, and since it's her first time on this project, she's in for an initiation of sorts. Okay, time to kiss a fish. <laughs> With the fish kissing out of the way, it's time to get down to business. Hey, flannel mouth sucker. Male ripe. Pilar measures every fish and decides which ones she's going to keep. Four, seven, eight. We're taking him. She's looking for fertile fish that are almost ready to spawn. Four, seven, zero. She's got lots of good eggs in there. Fish that aren't quite there get a microchip unless they have one from a previous capture. Pit tag recapture, no. Getting a new pit tag. Then those non-keepers are released. I am absolutely very happy with the outcome today. I have selected a few spawning fish to take back to the lab so I can then spawn them in our Razorback Sucker, Flannel Mouth Sucker hybridization study. We're taking 16. I hope that they stay happy enough to spawn. The razorback sucker was listed as an endangered species in 1991. Its decline has been linked to changes in habitat after dams were built on the Colorado River, as well as competition and predation from non-native sport fish. The razorback suckers are spawning in the wild, but we're seeing very limited recruitment, so their larvae aren't growing up to become adults as readily as like the flannel mouth sucker. Lake Mead is special because it's known to have a small self-sustaining population of wild razorbacks. Other wild populations require regular stocking because their offspring rarely survive to adulthood. We know that these wild razorbacks are hybridizing naturally with the flannel mouth sucker. What's not known is how hybridization will affect razorbacks in the long run. We could have the loss of that lake mead razorback sucker population through hybridization, but we don't know what the chances of that are because we didn't know anything about the viability, the early life stage viability of these hybrids prior to this project. Oh yeah, so see them running down our tail there? It's a five-year research project funded by the Bureau of Reclamation. 
The work we are doing is not going to stop hybridization, but we're trying to learn more about the impacts hybridization could have on the recovery of wild razorback suckers. After getting her fish to spawn, Pilar takes also, the fertilized eggs back to her lab. Bring those guys up to temperature. And places them yes. into homemade hatching jars. A moment of truth. I made the jars out of bottles that I had my dad save me. And in them, she's raising four flavors of fish for her study. We have razorback sucker, flannel mouth sucker, razor mouth sucker, which is the razorback female crossed with the flannel mouth male hybrid. And we have flannel back sucker, which is the flannel mouth female crossed with razorback male. It is a lot to keep track of, yeah. So I have to make sure I explicitly label everything. Flannel mouth sucker. Pilar started this study in 2016 as a graduate student at Northern Arizona University. I attempted to answer the question of the hatching success and the larval survival. She discovered that hybrids seem to hatch and survive at rates similar to their parent species. My uh, second chapter of my thesis was actually looking at the shape of these fish. So uh, when we're out sampling areas of the Colorado River that have razorback suckers and flannel mouth suckers, we're finding what appear to be hybrids. They, they look essentially like a razorback wearing a flannel mouth sucker suit. Pilar discovered that it's nearly impossible to identify hybrids by shape when they're smaller than about six inches. What we don't want is we don't want to find a whole bunch of hybrids that have keels this big and call them razorback suckers because that's, that's a big deal uh, because now this endangered species is all of a sudden um, recruiting in an area that we haven't seen recruitment yet. However, it's not necessarily true because they were hybrids. What I ultimately want to do is I want to be able to inform the, the field biologists that are working with these animals in the wild to say, hey, these are the ways that we can identify these fish. 2018 is the third year of the project, and Pilar will soon put the fish she spawned through swim trials in moving water to try to determine if hybrids prefer a river or lake environment. We're also kind of interested in competition and um, growth between razorback suckers, flannel moth suckers, and their hybrids. On the river, larval razorback suckers rarely survive to maturity. One theory is that hybrids and flannel mouths might be outcompeting young razorbacks for food. Pilar will test that theory with a feeding experiment to see if it holds true. The eggs have all hatched. We have some fish trying to swim up today. Spend just a little bit of time around Pilar and it becomes obvious she's a biologist who really loves her job. <laughs> yeah. I do, it's really lucky I do too because I had to put in a lot of work. So I, my master's, I was a full-time student and still full-time game and fish. And it was just a lot of work. <laughs> it would have been really hard if I didn't love this. The research that I do is to inform managers. So like the Fish and Wildlife Service makes species, you know, designations as endangered or they you know could downlist to threatened or whatever um, we have two native species together one of which is endangered and one is actually doing really well um, what do we do is, is the hybrid protected is it you know how do we how do we manage these things those are some big questions, and these tanks might hold some of the answers that can help wildlife managers make good decisions for the future of the endangered razorback sucker.